Uh, this is John Black, super chemist. The guess on the mechanism to change a nitro group into an amine group through uh, metal acid reduction. Here's a generic equation for it. You start out with your nitro group. You add two electrons, two protons, minus water. You get your nitro so. You take that, and again, add two electrons and two protons. This time, no loss of water. And you get your N-substituted hydroxyl amine. Then you take your hydroxyl amine, and again, you add two electrons, two protons. And this time, you're going to lose water again, right? Proton goes to the water. It comes off. And another proton comes on here after you get your electrons on, right? So you can have your NH2. So that's the generic equation. Let's try to go over the mechanism, though. Remember, we want to protonate first two times in two electrons, right? Protonation is the quickest thing, so we're going to do that first. You can see that uh, the nitro group becomes a Zwitter ion, and you have a positive nitrogen and a negative oxygen. So obviously, the proton's going to go on to the negative oxygen with all those lone pairs. When that happens, you end up with this, right? You got your hydrogen onto the whatever. Now your nitrogen is still positive, right? You took your negativity away by adding a proton, but you still have this positive part here on the nitrogen, right? Because it should have five electrons. It has one, two, three, four. So it's positive. So we're going to add two electrons. One electron to make it into a free radical and another electron to make it negative, right? Now the oxygen is right next to this, right? So the negativity is going to want to, it's more electronegative. So the negativity is going to want to jump up there. That double bond is going to jump up, right? You end up with this. The double bond jumped up. Now you have negativity up onto the, onto the oxygens. And you replaced your, you know, your lone pair on the nitrogen is now back. See where, how it's back? And you have one, two, three, four, five electrons. So that makes that neutral. Formal charge is zero. Of course, you have a negativity here. We already added our proton and our two electrons. So we, all we have left is to add a proton, right? We added on to the negativity of the oxygen, just like we did on the first step, right? And we end up with this. We end up with the geminal diol on a nitrogen group, on a nitrogen atom. Now, I want you to think about this. When you have, let's say, formaldehyde, right? And this would be a carbon instead of a nitrogen, right? When you have formaldehyde and you put it in water, it becomes methane diol, right? The carbonyl group splits off into two diols, a geminal diol, right? And a geminal diol on a carbon atom is the same exact thing as a carbonyl group, right? Because what will happen is one of these hydrogens will come over here, right? The water will come off. And the electrons from that proton that came off will come down to form this double bond, just like when you do it with a carbonyl. If this was a carbonyl, think about it. Let's say this was methane diol, right? And this was a carbon. Same thing happens. Hydrogen comes over here, this comes off, and this comes down to form the double bond. You'd have your carbonyl back. But since it's a nitrogen, same thing happens, but when you get done, you have a nitro so instead of a carbon with a double bond to an O, you have a nitrogen double bond to an O, right? This is called a nitro-so compound, all right? You can see the water is here. It's positive. It came off, leaving uh, your nitro-so group. Now, this is neutral, right? So we did our protonation, two electrons, protonation. We lost our water right here. And this right here is uh, internal, you know what I mean? This to, to go from the uh, geminal diol to the nitro so is internal. So we did our first thingy, two protons, two electrons, minus water. And we got nitro so. Okay, so now we got our nitro so compound right here. And we're going to two protons and two electrons again. This time, no loss of water, all right? going to protonate. There's a lot of elect 
lone pairs would probably go into the oxygen since it's more electronegative than the nitrogen. And you end up with this. And you can see you got an oxonium ion here. Oxygen should have six electrons. It has one, two, three, four, five. So it's positive. So it's going to grab some of these electrons from this double bond probably. And you'll end up with this compound. Now the positivity is on the nitrogen because nitrogen should have five electrons. There's one, two, three, four. So it's positive. Now, I learned this from the organic chemistry tutor. You can't have the nitrogen be negative. So at this point, you're going to have to add single electrons, right? So you add an electron to your nitrogen and you end up with this. Um, your nitrogen is now one, two, three, four, five. It is now neutral, okay? But it still has these lone pairs and stuff. So it grabs a proton, and then you end up with this. The lone pair has a proton on it, and you still have this single electron. So you add another single electron onto there, and you end up with your uh, N-substituted hydroxyl amine. But you can see we still added one proton. Uh, then we added one electron, one proton, one electron. So there was two protons and two electrons total. All right, so now we have our hydroxyl amine. And again, we need to add two protons and two electrons. We're going to add the proton first, obviously, to the hydroxy group to make a water group. And then this electrons will jump onto the water group, and it'll leave as a neutral water group and you'll be left with this RNH just like over here RNH the only thing that happens is the water left but you did protonate and the water left neutral so that positivity has to go somewhere and it goes right here because look nitrogen should have five electrons it has one two three four so it's positive okay now we can't add two electrons because nitrogen doesn't like to be negative and I learned this from the organic chemistry tutor yeah you can't add two two electrons at this point so I'm gonna add one electron okay and that will make this you know neutral overall you'd have because nitrogen should have five and it has one two three four five electrons so it has a formal charge of zero okay now here it is down here, same thing, right? We're going to protonate these lone pair. Even though this is neutral, it has a lone pair sitting there. The proton can jump on that lone pair. What happens is you get this. Now you got your methylamine, right? But your nitrogen, and only because the two lone pairs on one of these hydrogens, you're left with a single electron, right? That leaves us one, two, three, four electrons around the nitrogen and it should have five electrons so it's positive positive. and when it's positive you can add electrons so you add one electron and there you go you got your methylamine now if there's hydrochloric acid in solution obviously a proton will jump on these lone pair and you'll get a methyl ammonia you'll get a uh, alkyl ammonium uh, cation and then the chloride would be the uh, counter, you know, ion, the anion. Um, but my point is, on this last one, we protonated one electron, protonated, added another electron. So we still gave two protons, two electrons, but we split our electrons up this time. And we did lose a water molecule. Um, but anyways, this is my guess. Uh, Fienzal. Now, uh, my hero, uh, the organic chemistry tutor, he actually does this mechanism, and he does his different, okay? Uh, I really have paid, I mean, he knows more than me. The guy, you know, probably forgot m more about chemistry than I will ever learn. But I really think that I am right about this. Um, Especially the, especially this part. This is where, you know, the first part we agree on 
Um, but when it gets to this part right here, okay, he uses an outside source to protonate this to get the water molecule to leave. So over here, he ends up with an, you know, the water molecule leaves, and he ends up with an OH here, an OH. All right? I don't agree with that because of the way a carbonyl compound acts. This is so an analogous to that, it's unreal. If this was a carbon instead of a nitrogen, everyone would agree that this would break down into a you know, water group leaving and a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. This is the same exact thing except it's a nitrogen. And it has to come out to the water leaves and the nitrogen forms a double bond with the O, forming the nitroso compound, just like it would form a carbonyl compound if this was a carbon. All right, I have it like this so you can see the whole mechanism at one time, okay? And I'm going to put a link to the organic chemistry tutors video about his mechanism and that way you can compare the two mechanisms and see you know which one you think is right which one you think is wrong etc etc keep in mind i don't uh you know i'm not putting this up saying i'm i know more than the organic chemistry tutor blah 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 uh, he obviously knows more than me he's probably graduated college and etc and uh, so it's not about that, but in this particular case, I actually think that I am right, uh, especially when it comes to this part right here, making, the, you know, that it's internal. It's so analogous to a carbonyl compound that turns into a geminal diol when it's in water, you know what I mean? It's just so analogous uh, that it, to me it, it has to be this way I think this entire mechanism is correct. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'll leave a link to his his video. And he's great. He's like the king of mechanisms. So I'm proud of myself that I could, even if I'm wrong, I'm proud that I could at least understand everything he's saying and not only understand it, but have a logical argument to why he might be wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, because he's like an Einstein type guy in chemistry compared to me you know what I mean keep in mind I attribute pretty much all my mechanism skills or logic thinking about mechanisms to the organic chemistry tutor um, as a matter of fact pretty much all of this mechanism is you know I got from him you know what I mean there's only one change that I changed to kind of changed it overall was that carbonyl analogy to the you know the geminal diol on the nitrogen um, so that kind of changed it up a little bit but the the thinking of it or the you know was all him you know what I mean everything on here was him except for that one thing that I think you know is wrong um, so like I said he, he's the king of mechanisms um, I, like I said, I attribute most of my skills and logic and, and thinking about mechanisms to this man. Uh, so check out his mechanisms and mine and see, see what, what you think is, you know, which one you think is better. Now, on my mechanism, I lost two electrons, two protons, two electrons, two protons, two electrons, two protons. That's six electrons and six protons total. Now, the two, uh, the organic chemistry tutor he loses six protons just like me in his mechanism but he adds eight electrons he uses eight electrons whereas I'm only using six so that is different and also the right here about where I was saying this is analogous to a carbonyl in water where you know the it would be an internal thing where the proton would jump over here, water would leave, and you'd end up with your carbonyl or your double bond. Uh, in this case, it would be a nitroso double bond. But anyways, let me know what you think. Um, you know, if it's got any thoughts or whatever. Anyways, you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.